What's up everybody? It's 5.30 in the morning, uh, so good morning. This should be the sunrise behind me, but there's some cloud cover. I just left the dock. Uh, I'm trailing my boat this week, mainly because the bridge by my house is out again. And the key word there is again, but uh, that's another story for another day. Um, so today I'm gonna go out and fish, uh, fish the local wrecks. I'm gonna you know, mainly go for flounder, using jig heads, bucktails, gulp. Uh, I may go for sea bass, get my two sea bass if I can with some clams. So we'll see how it goes. If I can go out to some of the further wrecks after that, I will. It's supposed to be very, very calm today. It's supposed to be a nice day. You know, the, the ocean forecast was for like two foot seas, dominant period of like nine seconds. I mean, it can't be any calmer than that. So, you know, we'll see how we do. Hopefully we get some fish. The last couple trips I went out on, um, you know, we got some fish, but nothing really crazy. I last, last time I was out in the ocean, I got one 20, 21 inch keeper and, um, we got 15, Keith and I had 15, um, total flounder and like 12 of them were before eight o'clock. It's been a morning bite. The rest of the day was very, very slow, you know, and especially when the wind picks up and you can't get much of a drift. So hopefully today we do well and, um, see how we do. So stay tuned. Not big, but some other fish, another short. Right. Nope, another little guy. A lot of babies on this wreck. Come on up. That's a nice one. Good head shake. Come on. There's a keep. That's what we're out here for. That's what we're out here for. Look at that. We don't measure, but we will. We need the bottom up there. There it is. That's ocean fluking. He's missing an eyeball. Good one, though. It's nice and fat. Let's see how big he is. He is a little over 21. A little over 21. Perfect. All right, we're going to get the bucket and we're going to bleed them. Okay, that's talk tackle for today. All right, as far as tackle, um, I use a Spro type jig head. I tie my own. Um, this one here has, you know, it's, it's a glow white with a chartreuse head uh, on the front and just yellow and white bucktail. I don't think the color really matters so much. It's more the weight of getting it down. So this one here, I'm holding bottom, no problem. This is a three ounce. I probably could go to get away with a two. I mean, our drift speed today is less than a mile an hour. Um, you want to go as light as you possibly can. I just haven't changed it. Sometimes I go up to a four possibly even a five or six, okay? Um, gulp on the back, I like the pink shine, gulp grubs. This is a six inch. I prefer to have a longer bait on the bottom, trying for the keepers, okay? And top hook, go up about two feet. 
and I have my dropper. All right, it's pretty simple. It's about a six inch dropper loop. Um, regular standard hook on there. And in this case, I have a salmon red five inch gulp grub. All right, I don't think you can go wrong with pink shine, white, salmon, salmon red, chartreuse. Those are you know, prime colors. As far as the rod itself, I know some guys like to fish spinning rods. I prefer a bait caster. Of course, I got it tangled here for a second. Let me get it untangled. There we go. I prefer a bait caster. So what I use is um, this happens to be a Daiwa Alexa. Okay, it doesn't have to be a Daiwa Alexa, but this type this type bait caster, a small um, compact bait caster. This one happens to have the power handle on it. It's a 300 class reel. Um, I have 30 pound Power Pro on here. My leader material that I'm using today is 40 pound mono. I would prefer to use 30 out here, but I just happen to run out of it. So I'm using 40. I thought that would be better than using 20. Um, the rod itself is a seven foot uh, St. Croix inshore rod. It's, it's a heavy action rod, nice thick butt for setting the hook, but it's got a nice soft tip. So that's my, that's my setup that I use out here. And uh, you know, you can sit here and jig all day. It's a nice light combo. It doesn't tire you out. You don't need anything real, real heavy out here, okay? That one feels pretty good too. Let's see. Maybe. Not maybe. He's close. Keep him in the water. We'll see. He's gonna be close. See, good head shakes. You know, he might make it. He might make it. Let's see, better not be another 17 and a half. Oh, almost came out. That was almost a horrible net job. Come on. I do this by myself. Good shake, come on, be a good one. Uh, maybe not. Let's 
Feels decent. There it is. Yeah. Now that's a fish. Holy crap. Wow. What a flounder. Well, I don't think there's any reason to mount measure this guy. But we will. Gotta be about 25. Well, there you go. 25 inch flounder at least. I don't have enough room on my tape to measure him, but he is a big guy. Look at the size of the mouth on that. My tape stops at 21. It's gotta be at least 25. At least 25. It's now 9.30 in the morning. I just caught my third keeper, so I'm limited out on flounder. Uh, first one was 21 inches. Second one was rated 18. That last one was at least 25. I don't know, my, my tape only goes up to 21. So uh, I'm done on flounder. I'm gonna keep messing around out here. I may go out and try for some sea bass because because I'm done with this. I haven't, haven't even messed with them yet. I do have clams on the boat. Keep watching, stay tuned, thank you. Um, you know, I'm in about 70 feet of water now. Uh, I'm gonna drop down, see if I can get some sea bass. I can, I can keep two, and they have to be 12 and a half inches, so if I don't get any here, I'll just keep going out further. There's a few more wrecks past this that I can try. But, um, you know, try for them, and uh, maybe out on the further wrecks, maybe I'll get some other things like ling or, you know, whatever. I can keep one tog, so maybe if a tog hits, I've had them hit clam before. Um, I didn't bring any crabs to target them, so see how we do. But I um, figured since we limited out on flounder early, might as, well, might as well mess with some other stuff while I'm out here, all right? First drop, I already got one. Doesn't feel that big. Little guy. Uh, this is what we're after, but just too small. Here's your sea bass. Just got to the wreck. First drop. Just a short. There we go. Nice sea bass. Look at the color on that fish. That's a better one. That might even be a double. that one. 
Look at the colors on these sea bass. Turquoise blue and brown. And swim bladders coming up. But nice sea bass. That one should make it. Double check them. He's 14 and a half, makes it no problem. So if you guys are wondering how I'm staying stationary, um, I have a troll motor on the boat. Definitely recommend it. I mean, you just put spot lock on, it just keeps you right over top of the rack. You move a little bit here and there. You don't have to worry about anchors. I mean, this is uh, my third drop and we already got one, already got one on. We can only keep one more. So we'll see, maybe we'll limit out on sea bass too. As far as a sea bass rig goes, it can't get any more simple than this. It's just a high low rig. You basically just tie, you know, a loop at the bottom for your weight right here. Okay. Go up about a foot, maybe, maybe even a little less, tie a dropper loop, put a hook in there, put a piece of clam on, go up another foot, another dropper loop, and put a piece of clam on. Um, and then just put a swivel at the top. You can even tie it direct. I'm going to, um, power pro so i use a swivel for this guy but can't get any more simple than that this might be my second keeper now nah, feels a little small well maybe saying was before I uh, set the hook on that guy what you want to do for sea bass when you drop it down to the bottom is let it hit the bottom and then reel up a little bit so you're out of the wreck so you're not getting tangled this is like the perfect fishing for kids I mean they can come out here I mean I've been out here for five minutes and I've already got two sea bass keepers and a short and as soon as you drop it down, you got instant action. I mean, you can't can't beat this for kids, especially on a calm day like this. They won't get seasick. I mean, it's like a lake out here. But that's it. L limit number two. So now we're limited on flounder and we're limited on sea bass. So I'm not sure what I'm going to go for next. I'm going to maybe see what kind of plan I want to make. I may even just head in early for, for lunch today, but we're already limited out. So it's uh, this was a great day. It's 1030 in the morning and... Um, now I'm catching release right here, but I'm gonna see if I can catch a few more sea bass just to mess around with them. But obviously I'm gonna be letting up all of them, all of them go. So this one's going in the core. All right, so we're gonna drop it all the way down the bottom. This rod's obviously overkill for this, but this is what I had rigged up for sea bass, so it's what I'm using. This is my winter offshore rod. All right, I hit the bottom. Engage the reel, reel it up a little bit, and then just watch the rod tip and be ready. There it is, already hitting again. The other thing is to get through the shorts. Don't pull the hook right away. Wait for a bigger one to hit. That's a better one. Rex loaded. Pretty colors, turquoise blue. And I'll tell you what, sea bass, tough to beat sea bass you know, on the dinner table. They're uh, definitely a tasty fish. I think my only thing favorite, my only favorite before, besides that, that are local fish is probably a weak fish, but sea bass are great. Great table fare. All right, this guy's going back. Well guys, I'm gonna give you a recap of the day. Um, this was an absolute fantastic day, uh, unbelievable. Um, from catching a limit of flounder, limit of sea bass, you know, to probably the best part of my day, I actually saw two cobias swimming around my boat. Didn't hook them, but at least it was cool to see them. And they were big Kobe. I mean, the one looked like it was at least four feet long. Um, they have to be 37 inches, and I believe you can only keep one. But I didn't have anything really to target them. I was trying, you know, just with gulp and bucktails, what I had on, on the rod. I know guys do target 
them with eels, uh, live eels. But at least I know, you know, kind of where they're at. So if you guys have any ideas on, you know, better ways of catching them or how to target them, especially when they're swimming around the boat, let me know in the comments below. Um, so the best part of the day, I guess you could say, is the fact that the plans that I had in place, you know, actually, you know, came about. So, you know, I, I kind of had a plan of getting out early and yeah, I wanted to be on the water by six o'clock, hit my first wreck where I knew flounder were holding, you know, and then from there, go from wreck to wreck to wreck until I got my limit of flounder and sea bass. And that's exactly what happened. The first wreck I hit, um, I think it was my second drift. I actually got a first keeper. It was about 21 inches long. Um, you know, and that was again on, on gulping bucktails. Um, and then from there, it was only a couple drifts later, I got an 18 incher. So I had two and um, I, I hadn't even lost a rig, hadn't lost any gulp, nothing. And you know, it was just smooth sailing. And then all of a sudden, bluefish started coming into that rack and really hitting it hard. And uh, they started, you know, taking the, taking the tails off the gulp. I probably caught about 12 to 15 flounder off that wreck by the time that happened. A lot of 17 and 17 inchers. I mean, a lot of them are right there, you know. So from there, I hit another wreck that was close by. That was the second wreck I was going to hit. And sure enough, there was bluefish on that one as well. Um, but I wanted to really give it a chance and, and get a couple drifts. And I'm glad I did because on the one drop, as soon as it hit the bottom, I jigged it up and down a couple times, felt, felt that thud. You know, and I knew I had a nice one on there. And when I brought that one up, um, that one was about 25 inches at least. Uh, my tape only goes up to 21, so I'll, I'll get an exact measurement later on. So I had my limit of flounder by 9:30. Um, you know, and then after that, I figured, okay, I'll go get my two sea bass and try for them. So I knew of a couple of racks that hold sea bass, at least earlier in the year they do. And I went out to them, and sure enough, you drop down. As soon as it hit the bottom of clams. I had a sea bass on him in it instantly as soon as it hit the bottom. Um, short, short sea bass, and then the next two drops, right one after another, two keepers, and they were both about 14 to 15 inches. So that was nice, limited with sea bass. And then 10:30 in the morning, I'm thinking to myself, well, what am I going to do now? Um, I'm not in that position m many days. Most days, I'll catch two flounder or one flounder, and you're always hunting for that that limit. Um, so I actually could have went home today by lunchtime. I decided, being as I was out here and it's such a nice day, just to kind of drive around and, and check out some other wrecks and scout a little bit. And so I went out about 14 miles, hit a bunch of wrecks on those ways, on those way, on the ways out there to, to those wrecks, and uh, nothing but small sea bass. You know, nothing special. Um, it's so calm out here. Like today is, it's there's hardly any wind. There's hardly any tide. I mean, my drift speed was less than a mile an hour the whole time. It was like perfect conditions, but. The chop is about a foot, maybe a, you know, one to two feet. They, they, they were calling for two feet. Um, that's out for 20 miles. Where I'm at, floating off of LBI right now, it's about a foot. Um, to put it in perspective, I'm in a 21 foot boat and I was doing 40 miles an hour, you know, inland, you know, coming from 14 miles out. No problem, cruising right along. So days like this, uh, you know, it was one of the reasons why I went was because I knew the conditions were going to be excellent and uh, you're not getting beat up out here and it's a weekday I know some of you guys are probably working um, you know I'm lucky enough to where in the summertime I can kind of pick and choose my days during the week you know and not have to deal with the fleet on the weekends but there's nobody out here I, I saw probably two or three boats all day and um, you know again it's perfect out here so I'm gonna end it early um, I don't usually do that but Things I, you know, I'm gonna kind of enjoy this today and end it early and get back in early and clean the boat, clean the fish, uh, freezer pack, whatever I'm not gonna eat for tonight, and um, you know, enjoy my evening. So a lot of times I'm going back, like you guys probably do the same thing. You're getting back and you're tired and you know, it, it's it's a grind. Today's not gonna be a grind. Today's gonna be a nice, nice relaxing day going back and just take my time. So um, other than that. Again, thanks for watching uh, my videos. If you if you like my videos, please subscribe. Um, give me a thumbs up. Leave some comments. You know, especially with the cobia. If you know anything better with them, I'd love to learn a little bit more about that. You know, we're all kind of learning together here and teaching each other. So, you know, um, if you have any comments there, please leave them below. Uh, I have been, I haven't made a lot of videos lately, uh, mainly because of the fact that I've been uh, doing a lot of things with the family, which obviously that takes precedent. That comes first. 
and uh, my kids love going crabbing so we went crabbing a couple times I was gonna make a crabbing video and I didn't bother um, you know we got about a half half bushel of crabs both times we went out using hand lines and traps again um, you know I'm glad you guys are watching um, hopefully you guys get out fishing just like I am and, and enjoy it and uh, you know again thanks thanks for uh, supporting the channel and, and watching all right so other than that I'm gonna end it here and um, you know say goodbye and uh, tight lines to you guys and good luck out there